Hello everyone. A couple of people asked me a trick, if there were any tricks in plotting the, the kinetic data that was gathered for experiment number nine. And I thought I had a video in place, but I couldn't find it, so I decided to quickly record this one. So I pulled a data set out. This was an ex experiment that uh, I think I did a while back with a former TA that was working on some of these things. So here's the data. I just want to go through a little bit of little parts of it. This area right in here, as you know, is the uh, standard data. I'll just go ahead and highlight that in yellow. And this this data right here is the data from the mutant enzyme. And this is the data from the wild type. Uh, this sorry, this is the mutant data here. So this is mutant data, and this data right here is the wild type data, and I'll make that kind of gray. So I, I, a lot of times I'll just go ahead and, as I've done before, I've just kind of colored things so I, I kind of know where things are. These are blanks, and these are hydrolysis blanks, and um, in some cases it might be useful to use these, but let's not this time. So what I'll do here is the concentration of the standard started at 500 micromolar. So I just put a 500 here, and then I'll just do the same thing I've done in the past is equal to this divided by 2, and then I go ahead and copy that down to 125, or 6.25. See, it's 2.5. I think it's only four samples. No, it's five samples. Okay, here we go. There's the blank, okay. Now, I'll just go ahead and take the means of all these points here. So just here's the first, the highest concentration was 500 micromolar, because, and so put 500 here, and put equals to this divided by two. Go ahead and that's 250, and we'll drag it down to here. Is that right? Okay, it's down to here. And what I'll do here is take the means. Let's take the mean absorbance of all these standards. So we have the, the x values. This is the standards, and this is so this will be the absorbance values, the average of absorbance values. Equals. Whoops. And to just drag that down. What I'll do here next is I will go ahead and I will go ahead and plot this data. So I'll highlight both of these columns, go to insert XY scatter, and do this right here. And we and I get this as my graph. Now we've talked about looking at to see if data was linear and only use the linear data set. And in this case, it looks like here, this level's off right here. I mean, these two points are not very far apart. It's obviously not linear. This, this area right here looks very linear to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these data points and I'm just going to reduce the range. So now I have what looks to be a very linear. So right click on it, add trend line, Display the equation on the chart and the R squared on the chart. And the R squared is 0.9975, which is excellent. So we know this is a pretty good standard curve. So it's now, with all this data in place, it's worth going ahead and calculating our intercept and our slope. So enter those in. So here equals intercept. Double click on that. And remember, we have to. I, to highlight the Y's and then the X's. Hit return. So notice that point seven. Ah, I did the whole area here. Did I highlighted more than I was supposed to, so I'll just go back and change make that correction. 0.072, and you see it's 0.072 here. 
Okay, here slope is equal to slope. Why is like that? Comma in these hit return and there's the slope and there's the slope right there. So I'll go ahead and make this bigger briefly here. View two hundred percent and I'll show you that the numbers are equal. So 0 0.0144, 144, 0.0723, Now, you don't need to put this graph in your report, but this is the basis of doing the next set of calculations. So we have here is three triplicate values of 20 millimolar, 10 millimolar, 5, 2.5, and 1.25 uh, millimolar substrate. And we know that this is the same, the equivalent ones for the mutant enzyme. So we'll start off here and I'll go ahead and put concentration substrate. And that starts off 20. And we'll go ahead and do our typical little thing of equals 20 divided by 2 equals. Why did that negative sign pop up? Okay, just delete that. So as you're doing this, keep checking to make sure you see what you know, you know what's happened. So here we have all those. And the next thing to do is we need to go ahead and this next one will be wild type absorbance. I'll just call that WTABZ, ABS, and call this mutant ABS. And what we need to do here is put the means from up, from up here and here. So I'll go ahead and put equals, average, double click, highlight these three here, hit enter, and we'll drag these down. And here I'll do the same thing. Oops. Not sure what I did wrong here. So put equals average, double click, click on that, highlight these, hit enter, and there, there's, there's that, those averages, and I'll copy those down. At some points, what I'll do is as I'm going, I will adjust what the number of decimal places because it gets kind of annoying just seeing this many decimal places and it's not really significant, so I will make it small, a smaller number of decimal places. Four significant figures is probably one or two more than what's justified, but we'll go ahead and keep doing that. What I'll do here is now we have the, the mean absorbances from each of those substrate data points for both the wild type and the mutant. So next thing to do is go ahead and have wild type concentration of PNP, which is our product, and mutant concentration of P PNP. And we'll go ahead and do a similar equation. We'll go ahead and go, we've done it before, is equal to concentrate the quantity of this minus the intercept close that divide by the slope hit enter so here at this point we know that we want to keep the the intercept and slope constant so put the dollar signs in front of them there's a shortcut to automatically do this but I never remember what it is but I'll go ahead and do that. So here I will drop that down, do all those calculations, and then what I'll do is drag this over and, and do this and drag down. So now I have all the data that I need for the Michaela Smitten plot, and we may as well go ahead and draw that right now. So I'll go ahead and move all this stuff up, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna highlight this area, and I will do this area. So it's the control or command key to go ahead and highlight the second column. Insert, XY scatter, 
And this one I'll do is sort of a connected thing like this one, I kind of like this curved one because it kind of fits the curve a little bit better. And here it is. So it looks like it's pretty linear. It looks like it's probably in the initial velocity stage. You probably could have put a few more, if you would have had put higher concentrations of substrate, it probably would have evened out over here. So uh, let's go ahead and add the next one. It's select data. Hit the plus sign. And here I will put mutant and choose the, the mutant x values, which will be here. Click that little down arrow. And here, click this area right here. There, fit that in. And then here in the series, we'll put wild type. Click OK. So now we have Michael Smith plots. And they both look very, very similar, which from looking at the, if you if you remember here, looking at this data, these these data are not that different. And so it kind of makes sense that they would look very similar. I know some of you got very different kinds of absorbances and things like that. So your data will look a little bit different. Uh, it'll be kind of maybe kind of shifted apart from each other, uh, be kind of maybe bigger differences, uh, but um, we'll go ahead and keep calculating and I think you'll be able to figure it out. So here this is the chart title, we'll just call this Michaela Smitten plot. Okay, it's meant plot, and you know, and for your report, I want you to go ahead and put like concentration of P and P, micromolar and micromolar, and the millimolar concentrations of P and PP down here. I'm not going to do this for this video, so I think I suspect that all of you guys know how to do that already. Well, now we need to go ahead and do a line weaver Burke plot so we can get our KMs and V maxes. And so what I'm going to do here is the first thing we need to do here is one over the substrate concentration and we'll do one over the wild type concentration of P and P and the next column be one over the mutant concentration of P and P. So I have those in there. So now it's a matter of just doing that little, doing those little calculations. Here it's equal to one divided by this number. Hit enter, and we'll just go ahead and drag these down. And as you know, the the larger number is going to with the reciprocal is going to give you a smaller number. So remember, so the highest concentration will be closer to the y-axis, and the lower concentration will be further from the y-axis on this plot. So here we'll go ahead and do these as well. One divided by this equals that. We can drag that down this way, and then we can drag it across this way, and we have everything all nice and calculated, right? Let's, let's, let's delete that. I don't, that doesn't look right. One here, one over, oh. I'm sorry, I copied the wrong column. I'll go ahead and delete this. It's equal to one divided by the concentration here. So keep looking at your numbers. Those numbers didn't look right, and that's how I noticed I made the mistake. So here I do this one. is equal to one divided by the concentration of mutant PNP, and copy that down. So now we have... 1 over S is a column. 1 over the concentration of P and P produced per concentration for the wild type and for the mutant. So now let's go ahead and generate the next graph. And we're going to go ahead and what I'll do is I'll highlight these two areas. Do go to insert, XY scatter, and I'll pick this one with no points because we're going to put a trend line in. And here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and down here and go over here a little bit so we can still see these numbers and record things here. Put this down here. So we see a nice little line here. What I'll do is go and put the trend line in, click on that, right click, add trend line, and 
Well, we wanted to go ahead and I, want, I always like to see the line going past, so you need to go ahead and make that go back uh, maybe 0. 0.2 units. That looks good. Probably maybe 0. 0.2 units. Nope, not 2. 0.2 is not big enough. 0.8 is probably big enough. There it goes past there. So it hits the the axis. And I want to go ahead and display the equation on the chart and display the R squared on the chart. And I'll tell it to go. Away. And as I've done in the past, what I also like to do is I like, because, I, because there's multiple equations and I check everything by looking back, I'll highlight this, go to home, here, and I will choose blue to make the blue, the blue trend line and fit it in. And I'll move that equation over here. Now we need to go ahead and add the mutant data in. And we'll go ahead and do that here by having the chart highlighted. We should see in chart design, we can see select data. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead in the series one, I'll just go ahead and put wild type. And in here, we'll go ahead and click the plus sign to add a net new series. We'll call that mutant. We'll click here to get these values. And click here. We'll go ahead and highlight these values. And click OK. So we now have another data set, set of points. Let's go ahead and right click on it, add the trend line. Nice and yellow. Let's go ahead and have that go back by 0.1. I think it's probably enough. Display equation on the chart and R squared on our chart. So we'll tell that to go away. And then here we'll highlight these. Go to home. Here. Go to, I guess probably this dark orange right here. And we'll move this over to here. So we know that what these equations are. So we have these equations. We've already determined. Let's go ahead and change this to Lane Weaver Burke. And so here I, I expect you guys to go ahead and put the titles on the axes. And from here you can go ahead and do all the calculations that you need. You can, you know, if you want to know what the Y intercept is make Y zero and calculate that. It'll be, it'll be if you make Y zero, you find out what the X intercept will be. And if you make X, X zero, you know what the Y intercept will be. So, and those will be one over your value. So, I, hopefully, you'll be able to calculate those. I'll leave that out from this video, but hopefully, this helps get you along the way. I will see you later. And any questions, send me an email. And uh, good luck writing your. Uh, up your results this weekend. Thank you.